Good morning, and it's time for Talk with the Doc. It's Tuesday at 8.30, and we never miss a Tuesday with the doctor. He's here in the house today, and I want to welcome him. But first of all, this morning's Talk with the Doc is sponsored by Mako's Pharmacy, and it's located at 240 East 3rd Street in downtown Eurexville. Mako's Pharmacy is your local pharmacy with a caring and knowledgeable staff that is focused on your health and wellness. Dr. Tim McKnight from Trinity Twin City Hospital, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you, Robert? Oh, I am hanging in there. Voice is going a little bit, but that happens quite a bit. So, you know, that could be something we'll talk about maybe next week with allergies or things or something like that. Last week, uh, Doctor, you talked uh, about the the depression, anxiety with everything going on. And has it changed since everything started opening up in the community a little bit? Uh, I don't know if it's changed. I, I, actually, I, I've, the last couple of days, I've seen uh, patients with anxiety. They're still dealing with that. They're still dealing with the fact they've been isolated. There's a lot of things they, they can't do. There's a lot of people they haven't seen. So I think people are struggling with that. Insomnia is also part of that. But, you know, uh, what's really interesting is I was at Lowe's on Saturday, and they were the parking lot was just packed. And it was a beautiful day. It's like we're almost we're close to summer. And it's like it seemed like everybody just threw the mask down and said, I'm done with this. I'm going to, you know, working outside or out at the parks and stuff. And it's like everybody's done with it and they're ready to return to normal life. And uh, and what's really interesting is we predicted this in the healthcare uh, world that whenever we got to that point, things were going to get busy again. And Sunday and yesterday, our emergency room was back to its normal capacity. It's kind of like on Saturday, they just snapped the fingers and boom. I, I don't know that it's any safer, but the the psychology of this is really interesting to me. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll do studies on this in the future and, and sort this all out and see what it meant to people. But it seems like, uh, you know, everybody's ready to move on and uh, we still need to be careful. Yeah, I was out Saturday and uh, happened to take a motorcycle ride and went out past Tappan Lake and there's the, the, the parking lot was full. Boats were flying around the lake. People were on jet skis. Now, interesting enough, there was a lot of fishing going on and everybody, even the people that were together, were six feet apart. I don't know whether that's because they didn't like each other or what, you know, or yeah. what. but you know there was social distancing when it comes to uh the, the folks that were out there you know in in a group but you had a lot of area you could do that uh, there's a lot of issues going on now with things opening and not having that av- availability to be able to social distance you right. know and that makes it a lot uh, makes it you know difficult i th- i think it'll be kind of a a gradual transition uh, uh, mentally and emotionally because with the warmer weather and we're out more and we're feeling you know out in the yard and we're doing things that's going to help our psyche but i think when we're not still able to go to a movie and maybe we're not able to go to that restaurant we want to go to at the time we want to go. We're still going to feel the effects of this. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how people respond to this in the next couple of weeks, because I think in some ways they're expecting to have everything kind of back to normal. Yeah. You know, and as far as uh, the suggestions of wearing a mask and everything else, I personally will do what I feel that it's safe for other people. I will right. wear a mask and I need a haircut. Yeah. I'd love to go out to a restaurant, but it's not because I'm afraid of the, the disease as much as I am. I don't want to deal with large amount of crowds that, like you said, have not been able to get out for this period of time. Right. Got to let that go a little bit. I'm not scared of going out. I just don't want to fight crowds to try to try to get some of those things. So. Yeah, and I think we see all ends of the spectrum. We see people who have no fear of this. We see have people who are still paralyzed with fear, and they will frown at you if they see you in a store and you, you're not you know, wearing a mask. So it's really interesting, the response we see in different people. And that's going to take a while for, for us to adjust to. And unfortunately, you know, we, you know, comparing this uh, it, it, loosely to the 1918 pandemic, there was no communication factors back then to talk about these things. And now yeah. you have all this. And unfortunately, it could go the other way. Facebook, somebody writes something and then all of a sudden there's 35 responses. And, you know, if you could fist fight through the, the Internet, there would be fist fights all over the place, even you know the Tuscarawas County Health Department putting things out. There's a you know was a lot of negativity and right. there had to be some uh, information put out saying you know that's just you know if you 
if you feel a certain way, then that's fine. But don't, it's not worth getting in an argument over this stuff. And that's what you talk about, the psychology of this. Right. And it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this is definitely clearly, as you said, with social media and the fact that there's so much information available right in our hands on a on a on a personal device that uh, there's a lot of emotional reactions and there's a lot of inf- good information, but misinformation. And uh, so a lot of people have misinformation. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've seen in the office that's kind of interesting is people have been calling now that the plant manager wants them to be tested before they open up the plant again. Well, we don't do that. And people don't understand that. Well, why can't you do that? Well, we still have a shortage of, of testing materials. We still have a bottleneck in the system. And it really, uh, unless you're sick, it's not going to change the outcome of what we're going to do. So there's going to there's going to be a lot of people that maybe eventually if we have a good antibody test, which we don't, despite what CDC says that antibody test is not effective. We don't recommend it. Uh, but hopefully at some point we'll have a good test where we can say, yes, you were exposed. You have antibodies to it. But to be tested just because you're going back to work and you want to you want to have the PCR test, it's not recommended. We have we have these listed in priorities and people that are sick with symptoms and those who are sick in the healthcare industry, those are top priority. We always test them. And then we have then we have the next priority is the second responders, people in uh, extended care facilities and, and those kind of people at higher risk. They're also someone that if they begin to have symptoms, we test them because they're at higher risk. Uh, we have Dr. Tim McKnight on Talk with a Doc here this morning. Also, I, I noticed like some factories were doing uh, self tests when they come in. You know, there's interviews, you know, and me being an essential employee, I go through uh, a questionnaire every day, my temperatures test right. uh, checked and things. But, you know, the, they're relying on me being honest. Now, that, that that's a horrible thing for me to say because it's, you know, I'm not, not that I'm not honest, but right. they're relying on people to say, have you been around anybody that's sick? Uh, have you had any sniffles? You know, and, if, and you know, you say no, 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 and your temperature's 90, 97.8 or 98.6, whatever you carry. Right. You go in and work. And, right. and so, you know, that's, that's the testing that's being suggested when it comes to some of these large manufacturers. I think it was Ford or one of those this mm-hmm. morning talked about that. Yeah, we've been, at our hospital, we've been doing uh, daily temperature checks for every employee when they come in and when they leave. And if the temperature is greater than 100, they're not allowed to come back the next day. And we have to make sure that they are uh, a normal temperature without anything that lowers it for 24 hours before they can come back to work. Now, some people do carry a lower temperature. Does that, you know, if you carry 97, 97, 2, and you're running 99, that's similar to having a higher one, but you gauge it just on the 100? 100. And okay. it used to be when we first, when the pandemic first came out, the cutoff was 100.4, but that's been lowered, and I think that's a national, nationwide recommendation. So, uh, and anybody that comes in the hospital to be seen in the office or to have blood work, we're also screening them. And th- that's one of the things I wonder if that how long that's going to continue. Will that be the new normal? You know, that's that's kind of a boy. I hope it doesn't become the new more normal. But I understand right now why we're doing it. Right. And like we talked, you know, it's just there's that anxiety now has switched a little bit from being locked in your house and anxiety getting out. When can I get out that now I can get out now? What's going to happen? You know, yeah. and everybody's watching these, you know, and the number of cases don't mean as much to me when I look at them as, as the number of hospitalizations right. and intensive care, because it, there could be a, a, a an area where there's more testing and things like and you might see a, a spike. But when you see you start to see the levels of hospitalizations and uh, intensive care, that's where I kind of myself personally gauge how, you know, kind of check my own thermometer there to see how that's gauged. I think that's smart. I think that's thinking about the situation because there's a lot of people that have it and, and aren't really that sick. There's a lot of people that have probably had a cold or a cough that had it but didn't realize they had it. So I, I'm kind of the same way. Ever since this started, I was looking at the total number of positive cases, comparing that to the number of people who died and I was always doing the calculations on the percentage of mortality. Well, that's uh, that bottom number, the number of people that had it is was the big question mark. We don't really know. But th- for those who tested positive, we put that in the denominator and we put in the numerator the deaths and at one point it was high as a 6% mortality. Now it's it's like less than 0.5% closer to the flu. So my feeling what I'm telling people is I think this is the mortality rate is like influenza. 
we, it seems like we have fewer people dying of the flu this year, and what's made up the difference are those dying of COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And so in this area, I'm not really that concerned about it. I think we need to respect it and do all the things we're, they're recommending. But come on, look at, like you're saying, let's look at how sick people are getting, what that percentage really looks like. And, and a lot of the uh, requirements to classify the deaths as COVID-19, there may be somebody, that, you know, but the underlying health conditions, and they pass away and they have tested positive the underlying condition you know it has to be reported because of that but it may not have caused it but those are you know i'm sure that's minor but still no, you know, I, I think that recently in recent weeks that's become an inflated number that i don't really believe um but i and i'm not really sure why that agenda was pushed to count these people that you know have underlying emphysema and then happen to die and we find out later they had covid positive or maybe they had heart disease um you can't always say that that's the reason but for whatever reason now, we're, we're, call, we're counting those as COVID deaths. Uh, Dr. McKnight, uh, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate it. Uh, talk with the doc, and it's sponsored by Mako's Pharmacy. And uh, they offer their customers and community free assistance when comparing and selecting a plan based on your specific prescription needs. You can call Mako's Pharmacy at 740-922-5400. Thank you, Dr. McKnight, and we'll see you next week. Great. See you, Robert.